We're ready to go. I'm at a city park in Hudson, Wisconsin. I've checked the local rules, um, basically just, you know, no creeping. Um, as far as Wisconsin, uh, just has to be registered. And I've done that. I have done the registration, even though I'm not uh, commercial yet. So we're just practicing at the moment. Um, the other Wisconsin rule is no interfering with wildlife. Won't be doing any of that. And no operation over a correctional facility. No correctional facilities around. We're good there. Um, and I can't take off or land in a state park. So uh, this is a city park. I think we're probably good. Uh, let's see. Did you check the airspace? Uh, Class E up to 700 AGL here. And then of course the Minneapolis Bravo is at 6,000 feet. Closest airport is Lake Elmo, about five and a half, six miles away. Uh, there is a heliport about two miles that way for the hospital. Uh, and there are a few small aircraft I see going over, but I'm only gonna go up to about 300 feet here. So we're ready to go. Did all a little pre the checklist and let's go. All right, well, seeing as I have nothing really interesting to talk about, I'm going to read from the Part 107 test cram sheet from Drone Pilot Ground School. Starting off with the drone rules and FAA regulations. You must be 16 years old to get a remote pilot certificate. You must report an accident to the FAA within 10 calendar days of any operation that results in serious injury or property damage over $500. You must pass a recurrent test every 24 months to keep the license active. A small unmanned aircraft weighs less than 55 pounds. Part 107 applies to civil commercial operations, not to model aircraft, public aircraft, or hobby operations. You have 30 days to notify the FAA of your change of address. The remote pilot in command is directly responsible for and is the final authority on the operations of the small UAS conducted under Part 107. Non-certified operators can fly an SUAS, but only if they're being directly supervised by a remote PIC who is certified and has the ability to immediately take direct control of the SUAS. One way to do this is via a buddy box training system with one cord that connects two different control stations, remote controls, and transmitters. Even though visual observers and other crew members aren't required to be certified, they still can't participate in the operation if they're not in physical or mental state to do so. This includes being too hungover, fatigued, and the other health and wellness considerations a remote PIC would factor in prior to operating the SUAS. Commercial aircraft registration costs $5 per aircraft and is good for a period of three years. If your UAS is destroyed, sold, lost, or transferred to another operator, you should cancel the registration through the FAA's online registration system. If your UAS weighs 55 pounds or more, it must be registered using the FAA's paper-based registration process. Your UAS registration marking must be legible and durable. Sample, method methods, sample methods include engraving, permanent marker, or self-adhesive label. It must also be visible or accessible on the outside of the aircraft. You must have your FAA registration certificate in your possession when operating an unmanned aircraft. The certificate can be available either on paper or accessible electronically. If the owner of the UAS is less than 13 years old, then the UAS must be registered by a person who is at least 13 years old. If your UAS was register already registered in a foreign country, it must first be unregistered in the foreign country and then can be registered with the FAA. In case of an in-flight of emergency, you are permitted to deviate from any rule of the Part 107 to the extent necessary to respond to that emergency. If there are clouds, the aircraft must be at least 500 feet below the clouds and at least 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. You cannot fly an unmanned aircraft higher than 400 feet above ground level unless it's flown within 400 feet radius of a structure and does not fly higher than 400 feet above the structure's immediate uppermost limit. Scheduled maintenance should be performed in accordance with the manufacturer's suggested procedures. Part 107 normally does not permit operation of an SUAS from a moving vehicle. That said, it's that said if it's a land or waterborne vehicle and you're operating the SUAS over the sparse over a sparsely populated area, that's okay. Evening civil twilight is the period of sunset until 30 minutes after sunset and morning civil twilight is the period 
of 30 minutes prior to sunrise until sunrise. If you're flying in one of the two 30 minute civil twilight periods, your aircraft must be equipped with special anti-collision lights that are capable of being visible for at least three miles in all directions. No person may operate a small unmanned aircraft over a human being unless that human being is directly participating in the operation of the small unmanned aircraft or located under the covered structure or inside a stationary vehicle that can provide reasonable protection from a falling small unmanned aircraft. Visual line of sight must be accomplished and maintained by unaided vision without using something like binoculars. You can wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, but no binoculars. Looking through a first person view screen does not count as visual line of sight. Your blood alcohol level needs to be less than 0.04%. At least eight hours need to pass between drinking alcohol and piloting an unmanned aircraft. It takes three hours for just one mixed drink to get through the body. If there is any doubt regarding the effects of any medication, contact your local aviation and medical examiner. If you want more information on the possible effects on flying and using over-counter medications, look in the Aeromedical Factors chapter of the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. You can actually lose your remote pilot certificate and or not be allowed to apply for a certificate in the first place for up to one year if there's been a recent federal or state alcohol or drug violation. That includes refusing to submit a blood alcohol test. In any SUAS flight emergency, rule number one is to maintain control of your aircraft. Mitigate risk before flying by using the I'm Safe acronym. Well, that's it for the first two pages of the Drone Pilot Ground School Cram Sheet. Thanks for watching, and see you tomorrow.